Alright, who's got the booze? I'm out. You're out? Yes. Alright, let's, let's all right, go. Alright, alright. Come on. Turn on, turn on Dolores. Yeah. Yeah, come on, man. Let's do it. Come on. Alright. What, what guy? That uh, guy's queer. Yeah. I don't like the way he's walking. Let's go get him. Hey! If you're queer, we're gonna take your money. What if I ask you that? What did you just say? Come on, let's take him. Come on. Down to the tracks. Uh, Ow. Uh, come here. Stop. Huh? Uh, uh, come on. Uh, uh, come on. Uh, uh, take his wallet. Take him. Come on. Uh, uh, let's go. We hate them. You can't go anywhere anymore. Downtown, to a show, or just when you're walking home. I couldn't stop in time. I saw something, someone on the tracks, but I couldn't stop. You can tell they are, just talking to them. You can beat up homosexuals. This is not murder. The city maps call it Eureka Valley. But to those of us who live here, it's most holy Redeemer Parish. That's the church, and there's the rectory, and over here is the convent, and that's the school. Most holy Redeemer dominates every facet of my life. Bingo games, picnics, Weddings. We have potlucks. And funerals. We're large, working class Catholic families. We fill the playground and the school on Diamond Street with children. The 1215 Mass is always full. We go to the 9 o'clock Mass in class. The whole school is there. We have the first two sections. You'll get a tap on the shoulder by Sister Mary and Violata if you lapse off. It was right after the war I started seeing them. After my less than honorable discharge from the Navy, I found others here, like me. It's unthinkable in my hometown to live as a gay man or lesbian. But here in San Francisco, it's possible, if you're cautious. Oh, those queers are really freewheeling. This is a tolerant city in many ways, but this? Instead of being known as Golden Gate City, San Francisco is being tabbed Queer City. My orders are to get rid of this offensive mess, and it isn't an easy job. Homosexuals have flocked to our city from all parts of the United States. They are everywhere. possible solutions to it are discussed in other parts of the world. The results of the North Vietnamese offensive are an unforgettable reality here in South Vietnam. Our house is for sale. I don't want the kids raised here anymore. All that stuff and the hate that's coming over the hill at us. The hippies come in and wham, there goes the neighborhood. The Harlans, the Gaffies, 
the Matthews family. They're all selling their Victorians and at dirt cheap prices. And there's rumors a gay bar is taking over the A&D Tavern, damn it. In rapid succession, 21 of our neighborhood bars are now gay bars. The number of gays moving into the neighborhood is an invasion. That's what the old timers call the new man on Castro Street. Invaders. I now escort my children home from school. I fear for their safety. I'm guarding them against what we as parents deem unwholesome moral hey, influences girl. that our children may encounter on the street. My school is Most Holy Redeemer. Being Catholic, you're special, and those outside are not. Yeah, my family is frightened and prejudiced, but it's against Jesus and the Bible to be gay. You may not hear this at home or at church, but you will hear it at Most Holy Redeemer School. No name calling, no throwing things into stores. Yes, Sister Mary and Violata. When I go out to do Sunday Mass, hardly anyone is there. The organist is an older lady who has arthritis. She can hardly get the right notes. The school is now gonna close. And of course, then the convent. There just aren't enough students, and parishioners are very upset about this. Now that our beloved pastor, Father Moriarty, is gone, Most Holy Redeemer Parish looks like he's dying too. How can we have social events in a parish where people aren't even social to each other? We have to engage the gay community yes, in a new should. kind of relationship. This parish can be traditional and radical at the same time. We should make it known that all our neighbors are welcome here at Most Holy Redeemer. Of Agree. Of course. So let's not just tolerate them, but let's make them feel welcome. Gays are not a group that all Christians can accept as brothers and sisters. Individuals, yes, but not as a group. As Archbishop, my duty is to find an incoming pastor for Most Holy Redeemer that I know will be kind, intelligent, and pastorally zealous with concerns for the good of all the people, but will also be true to the teachings of the church. I'm not sure what to do when I arrive. So I form an advisory group of 12 people, mostly old timers and two gay men. An advice group. There is no canon in canon law that has requirements for a gay and lesbian outreach committee. It's really a dying parish. So what does the parish have to lose by starting a lesbian gay outreach? We sent out invitations and 65 people show up for a potluck. And then the next one, 100. An active and organized outreach of ministry to gay Catholics is here now at Most Holy Redeemer. And this is without precedent anywhere in the Roman Catholic Church. Every one of these people is now an agent for change within the church and the Castro. So I go to their meeting and I'm clearly not about to compromise anything regarding my sexuality. I talk about my background with witchcraft and my disagreements with certain points of the catechism. Sister Cleta never bats an eyelash but asks if I can show up Sunday mornings at 8. It used to be ugly and boring inside the church. Now there's all kinds of pretty decorations and flowers. 
The nativity set has tinsel all over it. There is a notice on a telephone pole saying the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence are coming to Most Holy Redeemer for Christmas Midnight Mass. So they come and all sit in the front row. During the homily, one of them is giving me these eyes. It's very distracting. So I tell my husband, I want to continue at Most Holy Redeemer. But he says he won't set foot in it again because those gays are being welcomed. Well, I'm staying here, but he's going to St. Philip's now. And there's others joining him. So I asked Father McGuire if it's okay for my AA group to use the hall for a Halloween party. But poor Father Tony had no idea everyone would turn up either in drag <laughs> or wearing practically nothing. So I answered the rectory phone the next day, and the woman, who is the second most uptight parishioner, is on the line, furious. Father Tony! It was like Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, maybe Sodom. To my mind, it is much better when people get out of their own groups. The gays can act silly together, and the older people get together just to talk about their pains. When they mix, there's a lot going on. It's the gays and the grays here now. You know, when I first got here to Most Holy Redeemer, I just thought, Hail Holy Queen was a good entrance hymn. <laughs> After so many years of resentment and disaffection, even hostility between the old timers and us gays, the parish is proving an ideal place now for reconciliation. And for bringing people together there's a real spiritual presence here again. I don't have to check my gay identity at the door. Coming to MHR, I can bring it openly. That I could not do at a regular parish. The Most Holy Redeemer window above the altar, it shows Jesus with outstretched arms calling all of us to be with him and that includes me. Star Pharmacy has pictures in the windows of these people with these spots on their bodies. How do you get this horrible thing? When John, our roommate, got sick, we turned our backs on him. He had thrush, dementia. We didn't want to catch it. The fear is understandable. I mean, what is this thing? The young men infected with the virus are very isolated. Their families reject them. Many just arrived here with few connections. We now have 50, 60 people meeting with all kinds of ideas of what can be done to help those afflicted. I just listen while everyone together figures out an action to take. I educated myself about AIDS, and since it's difficult to get through casual contact, I signed up to help. How could I not? The convent has been vacant since the school closed down, so now, a good number of us are able to help with setting up the new coming home hospice. Trust between gay and straight people in the congregation comes from shared leadership of major responsibilities. Justice demands that neither gay nor straight members be allowed to engage in segregation especially now. For persons with AIDS, 
let us pray to the Lord. A simple thing, yet very powerful. In praying for them, our hearts are open to them. The long litany of names in the prayers for the sick Robert Durkin. has an unusual power, Leo de Blasio. which comes from the community who are suffering and in pain. Al Emery. David Pasco. The old timers and the young gay men, because of AIDS, are facing the same fears of disease and death. But also here is a community discovering a new liberation and strength. There's a unity here now between everyone, a real spiritual presence. <laughs> 